Hey guys, this is Daniel from DLT Reviews, and this is my first impressions of the iPhone XR. So one of the first things I noticed when taking this phone out of the box was the brand new coral color that I have here. It's kind of a pinkish orangish color over here on the back and it's very bright. You'll notice that immediately when you take it out of the box and it's wrapped with a salmon colored aluminum frame on the sides and overall I think Apple has done a really good job with the colors of this phone. Moving on to the front of the device though is where we start seeing Apple cut some corners. The display on this phone is 6.1 inches which is larger than the iPhone 10 and 10s, but it comes in at a significantly lower resolution at 1792 by 828 p coming in at a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch, which is really low for a phone in 2018. I've been using phones with Quad HD displays with pixel densities over 500 pixels per inch, and coming back to a phone with a pixel density of 326 ppi is pretty disappointing. Overall, I think the iPhone XR display is not great, but it's also not the worst. It looks like a fine display, but it looks too pixelated at times, and I really hope that Apple puts in at least a 1080p display in the next generation. And finally, one of the last main physical differences between the iPhone XS and the iPhone XR is the lack of a secondary telephoto lens. Now, it does feature the same primary shooter, which does look pretty nice so far, and I'll have more camera samples and a more detailed analysis of the camera in our full review, so make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell icon to make sure you get notified when our new video drops. So this is my first iPhone since the iPhone success of way back when, and back with the iPhone success, we still had 3D touch, although we still do have 3D touch on the XS and XS Max, but here on the new iPhone XR, there's no 3D touch, and I actually kind of used that feature on the 6S, so not having it here is kind of a bummer, although we do have an alternative called haptic touch. You basically long press and it'll give you a vibration using the haptic engine, so that's something, I guess. And also, we still have the annoying grid of apps that you can't move, although the new feature here is face unlock, which I actually really do like, and I think it's really convenient. To use, although I wish they would have went the route Samsung went by providing multiple ways to unlock your phone. I think the Face ID feature of modern day iPhones is amazing, but I just wish they could add the fingerprint sensor back so it would make it way easier to unlock your device. So besides that, everything has been running pretty smoothly on this thing so far, and I'll update you guys on how everything is going in our full review, so make sure to stay tuned for that. So that about wraps up for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>So one of the first things you might notice about this new phone are the new colors. It comes in seven new colors, and here I have the coral version, which is really, really vibrant. Apple has 